Carla Vlade. Uh, thank you so much for being here. It's an honor to meet you and shake your hand. Um, <laughs> everybody else, it's such an honor. Thank you so much all for coming. Um, I want to tell you, first of all, that I'm just like you. And I know maybe some of you don't believe me, but during this lecture, you're going to find out more about that. Um, I'm going to be giving you maybe a couple key points. Um, I don't know if you're taking notes or you, if you're planning on taking notes. I'm going to give you seven points uh, that you can walk away with today because you can go to any lecture, go back home, and people can say, well, how was it? And you're like, what did he say? Panessa, Malia. So, if you want to do it, if you don't want to do it, no worries. My Serbian is not very good at all. I understand it more than I speak. But for six years, I learned a little bit of Serbian from Baba and Dada. You know, this trip is memorable. I'll never forget this trip. I'll never forget the first time I came to Serbia. In 2008, I came to Serbia for the very first time. And up until that point, I think I traveled about 37 countries. Um, we now are at 43 countries, and by the end of next year, I'll be, I, I can have a tally of 65 countries. And my heart is just to reach as many people as possible with a message of truth, a message of hope. Um, I'm not here for any propaganda with my book and whatever. The reason why I write, write books, the reason why I speak, the reason why I act in a short film, the reason why I did a music video, the reason you'll see Nick Vujicic do something is so in the hope that someone actually lives their life to the fullest and is encouraged if they're going through a rough valley or depression or something like that. Um, so the, first of all, I want to say, Thank you for having me here. It is my second time coming to Serbia. And going through many countries, I was actually very touched. Uh, I went to Bela Turkva, which is a hometown of one of my parents. I think your family dad was from Bela Turkva. And uh, my mom's family is from Zemun and Vršac and Vašica. Uh, little, right? Did I say it right? Yeah. So, ne znam kako ja. I don't know. Ne znam ja. Ali... Um, <laughs> Uh, but, but for me, it's just really cool because it's given me such a, a deeper understanding of, of really the mentality of my parents, of, of the things that they taught me from, from when I was a little boy. Um, and some of these principles I'm going to give you, um, I'm going to give you today to, to grow and expand and not just make you feel good in this lecture, but things that really are going to make you a difference. When I first met um, uh, Serbian orphans in 2008, it changed me forever. You know, when I saw these boys and girls, and nema, tata nema, mama, and nasha deta nema, to, it just broke my heart. And here I am going all around the world, and one of the things that was just brought up was, yeah, if you're going to another country and making, you know, a, a life for yourself to, to make sure that it's not about just building your career up or making, you know, you, you, you sort of build up a stability to get married, to have kids, and so on and so forth, but to not forget to give back. And I was really touched four years ago, and we've been waiting patiently to, to see the doors open up for us to come back to Serbia and give back. That's why we're here. Um, and and I'm, I'm just so thankful to have my parents here. They've never traveled internationally ever with me. This is maybe their 12th time of hearing me speak out of 1,500 speaking engagements, and Miss Mohia or Serbia. I mean, that's just crazy. Um, really, really excited. So my mom and dad, they're my heroes. They're the ones that have given me strength to be uh, who I am today, and I'm sure that most of you have heard the great news that's uh, recent in my life. I just got married in February, and we're pregnant. So we're very excited. I, um, very, very blessed to have my wife, pozdravili moj žene, and uh, I, I can't wait to bring, bring her and my son here one day. Um, 
And for me, I, I just hope that today is a memorable day for you. Um, I, I want to first of all start off to say that I love my life. I, I really do. But I'm just like you. Again, I'm going to say it. I'm just like you. I have ups and I have downs. Uh, in fact, uh, there are never times in life where everything is smooth. If you're having a great day and you're having a great six months, sorry, right around the corner, you might face something that's uncertain. And even the strongest of us go through ups and downs. In fact, in December 2010, I went through a depression. And I'm talking about that in my second book, about how there was something that I was building and it collapsed, basically. And I had a sort of a cash flow crisis in a business that I had. And me and my wife were dating for about three or four months at the time. And I want you to know, you might look at Nick as some sort of a great example in, in life, but I was crying on my living room floor for two weeks, even after all the success that I've had in my life, even after all the valleys I've come through. So first of all, I want you to know that you're still here, I'm still here, and you're here for a reason. And I just hope that you can see my life and say, Nick's not a superhero, but Nick's an example of someone who presses on with faith and with endurance to never give up. And I want you to know, if I came here with the heart that I have, and you can see the beauty that's happened in my life, if this has come from my broken pieces then dare to believe in what can come from your broken pieces as an individual and as a nation of Serbia. And it's up to you, first, in your heart and your mind. You know, I love it when kids come up to me and they ask me, you know, what happened, what happened? Kako kažeš, what happened? Yeah, right. And, <laughs> and they come up, and, you know, and, I, and as a kid, you know, I was just saying, pa ja ne znam, ne znam ja zašto, ne znam ja zašto. So one day, this kid came up to me, and he said, what happened? I said, cigarettes. <laughs> and he's never going to smoke. Um, I, uh, I love to play around, man. We... On YouTube, there's about 1,500 videos of me somewhere on YouTube in different languages. And we have one YouTube, we, we really, really, I mean, it's just so funny every time I see it. Uh, about a year ago, um, I was speaking in, in America, and in front of a big crowd, I said, how cool would it be and how funny would it be if I actually pulled a prank, made a joke, you know, on a commercial airline? You know, if I cause trouble, no one's going to handcuff me, right? And so... <laughs> So what we did was we actually, uh, I said, how cool would it be to dress me up as a pilot and greet the passengers <laughs> as they get on the plane? And so we got an email. Ah, it's all right. So we got an email and said, hey, I'm a pilot of American Airlines. We can do this. I said, awesome. So... We actually went through the red tape three or four months later. We got approval. They got my finger, fingerprints and everything. And we actually did it this year. Uh, you can see me on YouTube as a pilot dressed up. And as they're coming down the jetway onto the plane, I say, Dobar dan, Dobar uh welcome aboard. My name is Nick Vujicic. I'm your captain today. We're flying with some new technology. <laughs> And some faces were like, what? No way. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people, what, brainwave technology? And I'm like, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, you know, some people are like, what? It freaked me out. One guy said, oh, cool. And he gets on the plane. And I'm like, <laughs> really? So um, I love having fun. I love pulling pranks. And we loaded up the plane. And I said, don't worry, I'm just joking. And everybody's like, what? You know? But uh, I want to share with you one more funny story. It's the funniest one of all. Maybe you've heard it. Maybe you haven't. But we're at the traffic lights one day, and we're at the, in, and I'm in the front seat of the car. Ne vozim, of course. But we're, at the, <laughs> we're in the front seat, and this car comes up next to us, and this girl's looking at me. And I'm looking at her. She's looking at me. She, I'm looking at her. And all she sees is my head, right? So she doesn't see the rest of my body, right, that I have no arms, no legs. 
So she's looking at me. She's like, you know, I'm looking at her. So I grabbed the seatbelt in my mouth to loosen it so then I can move my body. And she's, she's looking at me. She's like, why are you eating your seatbelt? <laughs> and I'm like, this is going to be awesome. So I loosen my seatbelt. All she see, sees, sees is my head, right? Ready? Just imagine all you can see is my head. That's what exactly she saw. Ready? And <laughs> her face was like, <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> anyway. All right, let's, let's get into it. I, um, I want to be very, uh, uh, you know, respectful with the time given to me. But I do want to share with you my heart. I may go five minutes over, and that's okay, I'm sure. Um, first of all, I, I want you to know that the principle of life is to know what you have, period. To know what you have. We focus so many things, so many times, what we wish we had, what we wish we didn't have, what we wish we didn't go through. So the first key I want you to write down is gratitude. You got to be thankful. You know, when I was a kid, it was very, very difficult to be thankful. My brother and my sister were born after me. I was born this way, no medical reason why. And so I asked mom and dad, why was I born this way? And they said, we don't know. Only God knows. So I asked God. And I said, God, why did you do this to me? And he didn't answer me for many years. When I didn't hear him answer me, I thought, well, maybe then he's not real, and that's it. For me, then, if God is not real, and if my parents don't know what I'm going through and how I feel, then I'm looking my, at my life and thinking, okay, so what do I have? Well, I have no arms, no legs. I'm not going to get a job. I have no arms, no legs. I'm not going to get married. Even if I got married, I can't even hold my wife's hand. Even if I had kids, I can't even pick up my kids when they're crying. What kind of a father am I going to be? How can I provide if I can't even look after myself? When I went to school, everywhere in the world where I go, no matter whether it's a primary school or university, everybody teases everyone somehow. And Alpa Shalim say, Shalim say, Ali Usurtsu. In my heart, when people were even joking with me, I would try put on a brave face, but I would cry on the inside. And if I only had my parents who loved me, what else do I have? What life am I going to have? This is it. I'm going to be teased for the rest of my life. And I would come home crying, saying, Mom and Dad, I don't want to go to school. And they said, No, you have to go to school. And I'm like, But I don't want to. So I had no choice but to go where this place where people were teasing me. I would hide myself in the garden sometimes. And I don't want you to feel sorry for me. I just want you to understand where I was coming from, what pain I had. You know, when my parents tell me that some days they would only eat bread and water. In 1962, you know, my, my mom's family went through to Australia 1969, my dad's family went to Australia, and they started their life with, with nothing. And I can't relate to that pain. But when I was telling him, well, everybody teases me, all they could do was hug me. You know, if you tell me your pain, you might think, well, that's, that's not bad. Look at me. I would never say that. In fact, I believe it's worse being in a broken home than having no arms and no legs. I've met many mothers who've lost their sons and their daughters, and they would give up their arms and legs to have them back in their life. Loss is loss, brokenness is brokenness, and hugs can only do so much. A listening ear can only do so much. My parents could encourage me, but they couldn't heal me. They could try and encourage me, but it was never a full hope. So when you don't see hope, you start thinking, maybe I should just give up. There are a million people 
in the world this year and on average every year who will commit suicide, give up. That's one in every 40 seconds. That's a lot. Why do we give up? Well, if this over here represents the truth of all that I can be, these negative lies, they take me away from the truth, saying, Nick, you're not good enough. Nick, just give up. Nick, there is no hope. There is no job. There is no wife. There are no kids. There is no joy. There is no peace. There is nothing. Just give up. Too bad this speaker's in the way. But normally, I would come on the edge of the, the platform. I hope you can see that I'm right on the edge. Remember the plushies. Okay, don't get scared. Um, <laughs> If I fall off, I'll break my arm for sure. All right, but, <laughs> but sometimes in life, all these lies bring you this way. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, I want to ask you, who are your greatest discouragers? Think of the three people who put you down. No matter how good you feel or how bad you feel that day, you meet with them and you just feel worse. You know what I'm talking about? You got that in your head? They are not your biggest discouragers. You are. I'll tell you why. It only takes three seconds for someone to tell me that I'm ugly. But when I'm in bed and I can't get to sleep, I let those voices ring again and again and again and again and again. There are some people I've met where their fathers told them something and they're 40 or they're 50 years old and they still hear that negative comment that dad made that will never go away. There's only one thing that you can do with lies. There's only one thing that you can do with discouragement is to, number one, know the truth. The truth. When I had discouragement, I didn't know what to believe. Oh, Nick, you're ugly. Oh, Nick, you can't do anything. Well, first of all, I want to ask you, who are you? Let me ask you a really cool question. Do you think I'm cool enough to be your friend? Would you like to be friends? Am I, am I, am I good enough? Yeah. Okay. Don't worry about applauding. So here it is. So I'm, I'm good enough to be your friend, correct? Okay, cool. But I have no arms, no legs. So it doesn't matter, right? So you're telling me 100%. I know I'm asking you a very easy question, and there is a very easy answer, and you just said the answer, but listen very carefully. You know that 100% in your mind with no reservations that I am good enough to be your friend, even though I have no arms and no legs. You know that it actually doesn't matter. If it actually doesn't matter for how we look, then why do you continually put yourself down for how you look? If it actually doesn't matter for how we look, then why do we point at each other and gossip to each other and make it such a big deal if it actually means nothing? Girls, you don't need to be taller, shorter, this, that. Guys, you don't need to be more athletic. I want you to know that who you are is who you are, and there is not another you. There is not another me, and it's okay for me not to be like somebody else because I am who I am, and you are who you are. But the value of who you are goes further than this. It's not just about how you look or how smart you are. Let me ask you. You're here in this school. What if you never get a job? What if you never get a job? The Chinese government knows that I'm a preacher, and I'm a strong preacher. But the Chinese government, they were scared. When the global economic crisis started, students were jumping off buildings every single day. They started a law in every university campus that a university campus can only report a maximum of three suicides a year. Guess how many people were reported? Three. Guess how many more? I don't know. But they were so desperate, they asked me to go speak to the best top schools to let them know it's okay if you 
don't get 100% on your exam. And it's okay if you don't get a job. You are more than just money or a career. You can't give up. I spoke to 40,000 people. They put me on TV to 40 million households. Why? Because there is hope. But some don't believe. And today, if you don't believe you have hope, I hope this is the beginning of your belief to know that even if you don't become what you hope to come, what if you're a janitor at this school? Let me ask you something. What if that was the case? Well, I'm a failure. Really? Well, let me tell you something. It was mentioned even when your parents don't believe in your dreams. Even when your government doesn't believe in your dream or whatever, or your school, that you're dreaming crazy, whatever. I want you to know something. When I was 17 years old, I would have to wait for a taxi one hour after school every day. And I was alone. So I made friends with the janitor. His name is Arnold. He was 47 years old. He said, Nick, you're very smart. I'm like, oh, thanks. He said, no, really, you should share at least what you know to somebody. Nick, you're a Christian, and God has helped you. You should share it. I said, no, I don't have anything to share. What are you talking about? In my mind, I was going to finish high school, go to university, do accounting and financial planning, and start an accounting practice. That was my goal. But guess what happened? He finally convinced me. He twisted my arm. I got so annoyed at him because every time I see him, all he says is, you need to speak, you need to speak, you need to speak, you need to speak. I said, no, be quiet. I went to speak in front of 10 kids, and I was so nervous. My palms were sweaty. My knees were shaking. <laughs> all right. What do I have to share? Who am I that I could share anything? I was the guy who nearly committed suicide. At age 10, I tried to commit suicide because I was on the edge because of the lies. But I turned my back on the lies, and here I am, and I'm taking one step at a time, one step at a time to all that I can be and the truth of my full potential. So I spoke, and these kids were crying. And I'm like, oh, thanks for making me feel good. I didn't think I said anything special, but they thought it was special. My phone started ringing. Nick, can you come speak here? Can you come speak there? And I went to a couple. Then in front of 300 teenagers, I got up in front of a crowd, and I had seven minutes to talk. Within three minutes, half the girls were crying. And one girl in the middle of the room, she was weeping. And she put up her hand, and she said, I'm so sorry for interrupting, but can I come up there and give you a hug? In front of everyone, she came and she hugged me. And she cried on my shoulder, and she told me in this ear, thank you, thank you, thank you. No one's ever told me that they love me. No one's ever told me that I'm beautiful the way that I am. And I was shocked. Why? Because the only thing that stopped me from committing suicide was the love of my parents. And as I turned over to start letting the water come in my mouth, or working out how much air I hold in my lungs before the water comes in, I saw a visual, a picture in my mind of my mom and my dad and my brother crying at my grave if I actually went through with it. If my parents never told me that they love me, if my parents never told me that I'm beautiful the way that I am, I wouldn't be here. And when that girl hugged me, my life changed forever. I went to mom and dad and said, Mom and dad, mom and dad, I know what I want to be for the rest of my life. Right? It's how it is. So I, you know, I can relate to, to some of you here today, but so, Mama, so what do you want to be? I said, I want to be a speaker. She said, really? 
What are you going to speak about? Ne znam ja. <laughs> and she asked me some good questions like, well, do you have any invitations? I mean, do you feel comfortable? Are you a good speaker? How are you going to do marketing? And even if you go, how, who's going to take you? And I, I had a lot of questions, and these were good questions. And I had no answers. But I knew in my heart that I found something that was worth living for. If you haven't found something worth dying for, you haven't found something worth living for. Today I would die for my wife. Today I would die for my family. Today I would die if God sent me somewhere. I'm not just talking talk. And I'm not, I don't even have to mention anything. But I went into a country and I spoke 36 times in nine days. And I got a death threat and said, if you come back to our country, we're going to kill you. 2004. For me, I found something that's worth dying for. What is it? I was sharing, for me, the good news that I'm never going to die. The fact that even when I take my last breath, this is not it. I mean, I would be depressed if this is it. I, if this is all I have, 90 years, then I'm going to have all the sex I want, see all the pornography I want, do all the drugs I want, kill people if I hate them. I would do everything if I want, if it's just this, and there's no even reason to love. There is no greater purpose for my life. If it, then it's all vanity. All the money, all the drugs, all the sex, all the alcohol, all the pornography, fame, fortune, position. I don't care if you got a billion dollars. It ain't going to make you satisfied. But if this is it, yeah, I'd be depressed. But I went to that country and I told them, it's not it. There's a greater purpose. There's a life after this. And if I was born without arms and legs to tell someone of the next life, where there will be no sickness, no death, it will be heaven. But this guy got really angry and he said, stop converting the people who go from my religion into your religion. I want you to know I have a personal relationship with God. And I prayed, I said, God, if you want me to go back, give me peace to go back. And I went back. That guy who threatened to kill my life, he came forward and he made his life right with God. Right there in front of us. And admitted to us in the email, I was the guy who threatened your life. Forgive me. Now I know that God has a great plan for my life and God is more than a religion. I want you to know, that you are here for a reason. This life has purpose. Even the suffering. Look at my broken pieces. Do you know my parents had no idea that I was going to be born this way? Then when I was born, I said, surprise! <laughs> and everybody's like, what, what good can come? You know, and I wish that I met somebody else like me. You know, when I was 10 years old, I thought I was alone. You know what's going to kill you? is not having a job. That's not what's going to kill you. What's going to kill you is fear. F-E-A-R. False evidence appearing real. And to believe in your hope that you don't see. F-A-I-T-H. Full assurance in the heart. For me, here's the second point. You don't know what you can achieve until you try. We didn't know that I could write with my foot until I tried. I today can type 43 words a minute on a normal computer. After dve kafe, možemo pedeset. Right? I've scuba dived. I've skydived. I surf. I, there's a lot of things that I've been able to do. I do love my life because I'm thankful and I have the courage. Even on a good life. Have you seen that YouTube video of me speaking and then I lay on the table? Have you seen that? Put your hand up if you have not seen it. I don't know. Let me do it anyway. Um, no cameras behind here just for this next point. I don't want to show my guza. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Summers are over. Ako hoćeš napred, no problem. Samo dođi napred. Over there. Okay, ready? So sometimes you fall down. Even on the way to your goal, sometimes you fall down. And I know maybe you've seen it. I won't take long. But it looks impossible for a man without arms and legs to get back up. My parents had the wisdom to understand what failure does to a human being. Failure is not all bad as such when you're trying for something. You know what Thomas Edison said? He said, I didn't fail 9,999 times when I was trying to make the light bulb. Now I know 9,999 ways in how not to make the light bulb. In that context, every failure is a step closer to success. If I try 100 times to get up and I fail 100 times, am I a failure? I'm going to ask you one more time. If I try a hundred times to get up and I fail a hundred times, am I a failure? No. Then why do you think that you're a failure sometimes? If I'm not a failure, you're not a failure. Every time I try, I become stronger and if it's meant to be, I will achieve my goal. If we're talking about two things, we're talking about surviving and then thriving. If you're just looking at your life thinking, how am I going to survive? Don't give up. You are here for a reason. We're talking about Serbia with lack of opportunity. Look at my life. Talk about lack of opportunity. But I can't ever compare anything to the pain that Serbia has been through in the last 20 years. I have never come across any pain that I could ever compare the pain of what Serbia has been through. I can't. But we keep on going. One day at a time. This nation depends on the next generation. And yeah, I know, some people... Stačno da idemo u školu, da radim šta, da naučim šta. Onda jedemo u školu i onda šta, da radim gde, pa nigde. Jer ću da ostanem ovo u kafu, da imam u kafeterija, I'm going to smoke my cigarette and take a shot of šliv. Ja ću da samo popim šlivovice i to je to. But we must believe. We must believe. We can't give up. What about your kids? Think of your kids. You think Serbia is in a bad state now? Well, until people like you have a more positive outlook and you do what you can do, maybe Serbia will be in a worse state, God forbid. Morale, we need people like you who will say, you know what? We're in this together. We're taking one day at a time. Yes, sometimes maybe the West will put Serbia down and there's a stigma about Serbia with our history. Yes, but I want you to know there is a freedom in number one, being able to ask for forgiveness, being able to forgive, being able to forgive yourself in our own failures. You think I'm a good person? I'm not. I'm a good person. But I am no way near, no way near perfect. My goodness. Every day I'm learning. Every day I ask Him to change my heart. One day at a time, I know I'm not alone. And I want you to know, you can consider me as a brother, as a friend, who's not just going to come to Serbia and say, hi, bye, make sure you buy my book. I'm not that guy. You will be seeing me here again and again and again to invest in your generation for the future of Serbia as a Serbian.
Hvala, hvala. Did you get the message? Wow. Man, I must have been... Was I... Anyway, it doesn't matter. So key number one, the attitude of gratitude. Be thankful for what you have. Second of all, courage. You do not know what you can achieve until you try it. This generation here doesn't know what you can do until you try. Can I give you one example? What if, what if, a hundred thousand of you start a Facebook? We've, we've heard so many negative things from social media. The multiplication effect is amazing. My vision is one day an army of people doing good like never before. Can you imagine, I know there's only maybe 8 million people in Serbia today, but imagine on a global scale, imagine Serbia scale. Imagine if we can get 10 million people in the world together on a Facebook, and we give $1 a month, $10 million a month. You can build a lot of orphanages for that. You can educate a lot of orphans with that. You can clothe the naked with that. You can medicate the sick with that. It's a lot of money. We can start with us. So you just started that project. That's cool. So what I want you to know is in your own life, that when you in yourself can make a difference, smiling at people, being a listening ear to people, friendship, you know how it is. You come to school, how you doing? Dobro. You know, you go home, maybe to your mom and dad, how was school? Fine. What'd you learn? Nothing. You know how it is. But kako kažeš nothing? Šta učiš? Na učiš. What do you mean? You were at school all day and you learned nothing? You know how they say that. But in your life, we have this mask. How are you? Good. Fine. No, 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 no. Really. How are you? When you really are concerned for the person next to you, you know what that is? Love. Love. So I want to ask you, how much more does Serbia need to suffer before we realize the power of being active together? How many more orphans do we need in this world? How many more people need to go hungry before we say, you know what, enough's enough. We're going to do what we can. You can't rely on the government to do everything. You can't rely on the media to do everything. For instance, integration of special needs kids into a school. I've been to countries where they kill anybody with a disability. Right there. Baby's born, missing an arm, boom, we kill it. Straight away. I'm not talking about abortion. I'm talking about they bury the child alive in tribal beliefs, in some places still, in countries like Lib Liberia, I met the president, Madame Salif. She was the first female African president. She just got the Nobel Peace Prize last year. And we talked for 45 minutes, and we gave each other a hug. Then I went up, and I talked in front of 10,000 people. And this woman came through the crowd, and she held this little baby girl, three weeks old, with fingers coming out of her shoulders. This baby didn't have arms. And I kissed the child on the forehead, and I prayed for the child, and everybody was like, <gasps> and I'm like, why, why are they reacting like that? Someone told me they were wondering, why hasn't that child been killed? And I told them, every child is valuable. Since that time in that city, not one disabled child that we hear has been killed. There are... When we talk about a movement, we're talking about 
well, we just need more businesses to employ people in wheelchairs. You can't just rely on that. Well, we just need more resources to help our disability. You can give anyone all the resources they want, but until they're motivated and they feel unashamed of coming out of their house, that's why I'm here as well. I want parents of special needs kids to know that their children are beautiful just the way that they are. I want society to know that every human being has value, and we all need each other. The government, media, business, Education and society, those six things, those things when we come together, we work together, then we know, key number three, when we fail, we try again. Why? Because we can't give up on that dream. Key number four, change your obstacles into opportunities. Think of this. When my mom told me, well, you want to be a speaker? Do you have any marketing skills? No. So what was it? It was an obstacle. No. It was an opportunity to learn about marketing. You've got to see your life in its right way. Change your obstacles into opportunities. So number one, be thankful. Number two, you don't know what you can achieve until you try it. Number three, when you fail, try again. Number four, did you write it down? Maybe not. That's okay. Change your obstacles into opportunities. Number five, dream big. You got to dream big. Number six, never give up. Let me tell you. I don't know how much time I got. Now I do. Here it is. Ready? I had so many obstacles. Do you know how many invitations I have for me to speak today? 30,000. 30,000 people saying, Nick, can you come to our school? Can you come to our nation? Can you come this? Can you come there? I've only spoken 1,500 times. So I've had to say 28,500 times, sorry, I can't do it. Do you know how many invitations I started with? Zero. Maybe you feel like you're starting with zero. Well, you've got to try with what you have, right? Be thankful. See this foot? I actually sprained this foot playing soccer, and I couldn't use it for three weeks. One day it was like this, and next day it was like, oh, like this, right? <laughs> this foot is everything, my mobility. And for three weeks, I was in bed, and I felt disabled for the very first time. We take so many things for granted. Have, has this sentence come to your mind today? Ready? Pain in my body. No, because you don't have pain in your body. And then if you have pain in your body, you're thinking of pain in your body. Then when you don't have pain in your body, you don't think about pain in your body. Be thankful that you don't have pain in your body. Be thankful that you're breathing on your own. You have 10 fingers, 10 toes, arms and legs. We have life. And when you see what you do have, sometimes you start with nothing. For me, I had zero invitations. So I got at the phone book, and I started calling schools. Boop, 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 brr, brr, hello. And I didn't know what to say. I had no marketing skills. I was very nervous. And I said, um, hi, my name is Nick, and I am a speaker. And she's like, mm-hmm, sure, right? And she said, uh, so how can I help you? She said, I said, well, can I come and speak at your school? That was it. That was my marketing pitch, and I was hoping someone would say yes. And she said, uh, no, thank you, and poof, hung up the phone. Was that a failure? Yes. Did I give up? No. Do you know how many schools I called? 53 schools. 52 schools said no, 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 thank you. No, 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 I didn't give up. Why? Because the remembrance, that memory of that girl crying on my shoulder, and I'm thinking everyone in the world needs to know that they're loved and they're beautiful the way that they are. Save my life, I want to save someone else's. So I didn't care how many times I failed because it was worth the failing to try and succeed. 53rd phone call after 52 no's, 
I got better and better and better and better and better at asking. And the 53rd phone call went like this. Boop, 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 boop. Hello? Hello, my name is Nick Vujicic, and I'm a professional motivational speaker. And I was wondering if I can come and speak to your school about bullying, self-esteem, and dreaming big. And she said, okay. And I'm like, what do I do now? Like, <laughs> I wasn't ready for the success. And I'm like, what am I going to do? We will never be perfect, but we can't afford to strive for perfection. We can't give up on that. We can't give up on hope. So, guess what happened? I didn't want my parents to take me because they didn't, they, they, they didn't believe in my dream of becoming a speaker. So, I go to my brother, and he's watching TV, and he's 16, I'm 19. And I come in the room, he's watching TV like this, and he says, hey... And I said, hey. And he said, what's up? I said, guess what? He's like, what? I said, I'm speaking at a school. He's like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> like this. And, and he says, wait a second. You want me to take you, don't you? And I'm like, please, 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 please take me. The school is going to pay me 50 bucks to go and speak, right? And so he's like, uh, where is it? I said, I don't know. It's, it's quite a long distance. Let me go check the map. In checking the map, I found out that after calling 53 schools, you start calling schools that are not in your city, all right? This school was two and a half hours drive away from my home, and I'm thinking, I'll make it on time, you know what I mean? And, and I needed my brother to take me, and he said, no, nah, I'm busy. I said, I'll pay you 50 bucks. He said, okay. So now I'm paying my brother, and it's two and a half hours drive there, two and a half hours back. That's five hours on the way to this city that we've never heard before. He said, who lives out here? I don't know. He said, do you even know how long you're speaking for? I said, no. He said, why didn't you ask? I said, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing, you know. So I get to the school. I talk to the headmaster, and, you know, she gives me a hug. Hi, thank you. Thank you for coming. No, name of Chamo. Nice to meet you. And then I said, so I'm wondering, how many minutes would you like me to speak for? I'm thinking 20. I'm thinking 30. Five hours. She says, ah, five minutes. And I'm like, five minutes? Are you serious? I, I, my brother was laughing. Like, he just couldn't believe it. He doesn't care. He got paid, right? And I'm, and I'm thinking, but, you know, maybe it's a big crowd. You know, if it's only five or ten minutes, that's okay. I'm going to be all right. You know, maybe it's a big crowd. So I said, oh, so how many people are going to be there? Oh, we're really excited. We're going to bring ten of our leaders. And I'm like, my suits are just stopped beating. Like, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, oh. What a failure. I did all this for this. I got up there and I spoke. And I thought I did okay. I said thank you. I said goodbye. We were in my car on the way home. And I told my brother, don't tell mom and dad. It was a failure. I went home. And I pretended to my parents that it went well. And I went to bed. You know the mornings where you just don't want to get out of bed, not because you're tired. You just have zero motivation. That was me. My phone started ringing in the morning. I finally picked it up. And I said, hello? Like the hello. And they said, is this Nick Vujicic, the motivational speaker? Yes, yes, this is him. She said, oh, we heard that you did such a great job in such and such school. We, we would love you to come to our school. Please tell me, what would it take for you to come to our school? And I said, well, let me check my schedule. <laughs> That's how it begins. You try. You keep on going. Keep on going. Anyway. So I want to finish off, for me, the seventh point. Faith, yeah? Some people say that they believe in God. And I'm not here to preach 
I didn't even bring my Bible here. But the Bible is in my heart. There are promises of God that I've held on to. Why? Because only God could help me where my parents couldn't. And if you're having a good day, great. But for me, to know the truth of who I am, my purpose, and my destiny, without my faith in God, and knowing what the Bible says, reading it for myself, it changed me. Maybe you don't believe me. But we have on camera supernatural things. Blind eyes seeing right in front of us. Maybe you don't believe me. Deaf people hearing right in front of us. Maybe you don't believe me. But we've seen it. And there is a spiritual realm. It's very real. And in my life, he is real. I have a pair of shoes in my closet in case he gives me arms and legs. But I'm not waiting for them. I don't need them. Because more than arms and legs, I need peace. More than arms and legs, I need purpose. So if you haven't found peace and you haven't found purpose, I'm encouraging you. Even if you become a janitor, but you have peace and purpose, maybe you're a janitor who can inspire someone who inspired millions of people all around the world. You don't know what can come out of your broken pieces until you give your broken pieces a chance. So give yourself a chance. Don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on Serbia. And what will be will be. But my parents, I'm going to leave you with this saying. In everything in life, do your best and trust God in the rest. Love you all so much. Thank you very much. Bravo. I felt a lot of hugs in that applause. Thank you so much. I wish I could hug you all. You can sit down if you want. Um, I know when my legs get tired, I can't feel my legs. <laughs> um, Ali, today, I wish I could hug you all. We, we, we can't do that today. I wish I could sign your books. Probably can't do that. Too many people. I hope you enjoy my book. Um, we, we are really wanting to bring this message to all of Serbia. And uh, we are planning that the recording of tonight, if you cannot make it, tickets were sold out. Um, family and friends, maybe you know, you wish they could hear me. Uh, we're going to broadcast this either on TV um, or on the internet or both. Really want this message to get out. So um, I want you to know that everything I said, I'm not this guy to say, just think positive and everything's going to be okay. <laughs> I'm not that guy. But I hope you realize that life is real, brokenness is real, but hope is real. So don't believe anything else but hope, and with faith you'll become 
If anybody wants a Bible, anything like that, you can email my team. Where do they go to? What Samuel, where do they go? If you want a Bible, we can give you a Bible. Samuel, his organization, he can talk about that in a second. But I just want you to know that if this book changes your life and you feel moved to write me a letter in how this book's changed you or how this presentation's changed you, please, you can send emails to... Oh, my gosh. So, um, so info at nickvujic.rs. Info at nickvujic.rs. So if you want to email me, we'd love to hear from you. If you want to talk to someone, you can you know, get any resources there. Opet hvala za sve. Thank you for your love. God bless you. We'll see you again soon. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. The Bible says my king is the king of the Jews. He's the king of Israel. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. He's the king of kings. And he's the Lord of lords. That's my king. I, I wonder do you know him? <laughs> my king is a sovereign king. No means of measure can define his limitless love. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. Do you know him? He's the greatest phenomenon that has ever crossed the horizon of this world. He's God's son. He's a sinner's savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He is the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the only one qualified to be an all sufficient savior. I wonder if you know him today. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and sustains. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleans the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captive. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the age. He rewards the diligent. And he purifies the meek. I wonder if you know him. He's a key to knowledge. He's a wellspring of wisdom. He's a doorway of deliverance. He's a pathway of peace. He's a roadway of righteousness. He's a highway of holiness. He's a gateway of glory. Do you know him? Well, his life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. And his yoke is easy. And his burden is light. I wish I could describe him to you. He's indescribable. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He's irresistible. Well, you can't get him out of your mind. You can't, you can't get him off of your head. You can't outlive him, and you can't live without him. Well, the Pharisees couldn't stand him, but they found out they couldn't stop him. Tyler couldn't find any fault in him. Terror couldn't kill him. 